For most of us, the journey to the water's edge involves at least one and possibly two legs. The first of these will be time spent on the road, followed by getting the boat from the top of the slip to the water's edge. Having already looked in depth at choosing an outfit, we'll take it as read that your trailer meets all the necessary on-road legal requirements. But it might not meet the rigorous wear and tear requirements that dragging such a heavy lump about on the back of a car exerts on the outfit, and in particular, the tyres. With the amount of time given over to work, family commitments and bad weather, trailer tyres should never actually wear out in terms of tread loss. What eventually happens is that the rubber starts to perish and crack, particularly when standing for long periods of time. If the boat hasn't been out for a bit, jack the wheels up and give them a quarter turn to put a new piece of rubber in contact with the tarmac. Ply ratings are another area for concern. A car, which is often heavier than a boat, can run around happily all day on four ply tyres. But because a boat channels all its downward pressure through just two contact points with the ground, it needs six and more preferably eight ply tyres. This is what happened to our outfit when the trailer was inadvertently sent out from the manufacturers with four ply tyres by mistake. The biggest single factor affecting travel on the road is weight balance and in particular getting its distribution right along the length of the trailer. Ideally when fully loaded for a trip, you want around 80 pounds of weight on the tow hitch. You can check this on a bathroom scale. Too little weight causes the hitch to bang up and down on the tow ball, particularly on an uneven road. It can also play its part in causing the trailer to snake from side to side. This usually happens on long straight runs of flat road such as a motorway, particularly on the downhill gradients. Outside of a radical rethink about weight displacement inside the boat itself, which isn't always practical, there are two ways in which you can add, or if need be, remove weight from the tow ball, both of which are best done on the beach when the boat has been launched. Both involve shifting the weight of the boat either forward or backwards over its fulcrum point of the axle. If you need more weight on the front, try moving the winching post forward but do this in small increments of a few inches at a time, checking it back at home on the bathroom scales. In case you might need to do this again years on, such as after an engine change, it pays to grease the threads to prevent the nuts from seizing on. One thing you will need to keep an eye on when doing this, is that the boat doesn't end up so far forward that the rear rollers are protruding beyond the transom, reducing the degree of support to the under hull. Alternatively, you can loosen the axle bolts and slide it back a few inches. This will have the same effect in terms of reduced snaking as moving the winch post, but again the rear rollers may protrude and may need to be taken account of. Depending on the position of the cradle supports on the frame, it might be possible to shuffle these forward to compensate, though there are usually stoppers welded in place to limit this. If it's still a little light, tackle boxes, lead weights and the like might need to be moved up to the front storage lockers. This stuff should already be in place before any weight balancing adjustments are made, or you might end up with too much weight for the car, and for your back. As ingenious as this idea might be, there are much better ways of getting the weight distribution right. Uneven weight distribution across the back of the boat particularly with fuel, batteries and anchor, can also add to the problem. Wagons overtaking too close on the motorway can also set things off. I find that by waiting until they get close to the boat, then easing over towards the hard shoulder to widen the gap often helps. The rest of the on-road stuff revolves around security. Obviously, the winch strap connection provides one very important point of fixing of the boat to the trailer. As a backup measure, I also wrap the lazy line around the winch post. However, a better alternative is a short security wire from the winch post to the winching eye. 
The club I belong to insist on this when towing on the slip or the beach using one of its vehicles. If the winch were to fail on a steep slip, you could be looking at serious damage to passers-by, the boat, or both. On the road, a strap to the rear of the boat clamps the hull down tight to the rollers. Some people also like to strap their boat down at the bow as an added security measure. Completing the on-road stuff is a clearly visible prop bag and a lump of wood to lower the power trim down again so that the engine won't hit the floor if the hydraulic rams fail. To non-boat users, beaches are simply stretches of sand to have fun on, but not to small boat anglers. Until you try dragging a heavy trail boat through this stuff, it's hard to imagine how somewhere so apparently innocuous could hold so many traps. But learning how to read and negotiate a beach is not something you want to be doing on the hoof. And on some non-fishing weekend, particularly if it coincides with a big tide, make a low water inspection of the beach noting potential hazards, such as boulders, stones, gullies, soft banks, groins and anything else that could well do to be avoided at some later date. And remember, a big winter storm can quickly change the features of what was previously a familiar stretch of beach. The key words to remember here are preparation and anticipation. The first thing to say is that most beach launching sites cannot be negotiated using a car. Be aware that if you lose a car off road, it's your loss. The insurance people won't want to know. Even two-wheel drive tractors and four-wheel drive cars can struggle, dependent of course on how they are used. When in doubt, walk ahead of the towing vehicle testing the ground. It's better that you find the soft spots rather than sink the car or trailer wheels. If others have already launched before you, take note of their tyre tracks, bearing in mind that the best route might not always be the most direct. Tracks like these suggest this route is ok to follow. Areas of soft sand like this need to be avoided wherever possible. Equally, areas where tyre tracks disappear completely are also suspect as they suggest wet boggy ground. Soft sand usually occurs on raised banks with firmer sand around their periphery. If you do need to cross any ground where the wheels are going to dig in, you need to know in advance and select a low enough gear to get through before you hit the stuff. The secret to getting through wheel grabbing ground is to keep moving at all costs. The moment you ease off the throttle to change gear, the vehicle will stop and probably won't move forward again. Maybe not with a powerful four wheel drive tractor like this one, but with anything less you do risk getting stuck and the more you rev and pull trying to get going again, the worse the situation becomes. If the wheels go down, one approach is to reverse out of the hole and either try a different line, or as here, unhitch the trailer, take the towing vehicle onto firmer ground where it won't sink, rope the trailer to it and drag the boat clear. Then it's back to business as usual. Similarly, when submerged trailer wheels get bogged in while winching on, unhitch, drive all up the beach and rope the trailer. That way, if the towing vehicle's wheels start to dig in, you still have some breathing space to sort things out before the tide reaches it. Alternatively, put the towing vehicle's wheels on boards then they can't go down. A shovel boards and a good strong rope are essential tools when going it alone and launching from a beach. The rope can also be used to drag the boat clear of the water before trailering so that the trailer wheels don't go down when the incoming tide undermines the sand making it less stable.
but it's advisable to have a keel band fitted if you intend doing this kind of thing regularly to prevent gel coat wear where the boat makes contact with the sand. Another trick which is particularly useful in rough weather, though demonstrated here in calm conditions, is to drag the boat clear of the water's edge, simply to make lining it up with the rollers and getting it back onto the trailer that much easier. Trailer wheels are not the only ones in danger of getting bogged down in soft sand. Towing vehicles are also vulnerable, even tractors and four-wheel drives. Getting suitable assistance and roping up quickly is essential if you don't want to compound the problem, particularly on an incoming tide. Some, unfortunately, are less lucky than others. And some people have absolutely no luck at all. Whenever you rope anything up for pulling, use a fixed loop at one end of the rope, either for the tow ball or some other suitable point on the trailer. And at the other end, try using this knot. Make sure you have enough length on the free end to form around half a dozen simple loops around a yard or so apart. Hold the loose end of the rope tight when the tension is applied and it won't slip into something that is impossible to untie. When the tension is relaxed the knot quite literally falls apart which is good as you might need to shorten up on the rope and have another go if the firm ground the towing vehicle is on is quite small. Sometimes engine power alone is not sufficient to get out of a soft sand hole and a little elbow grease might also be called for. Pushing at the back of the boat can help but not as much as digging the wheels out creating a nice gradient in the sand. If you don't routinely carry a shovel then you'll have to improvise with whatever else is handy a good example of which is an oar. And when the going gets really tough, as it sometimes can, two tractors working together might be called for. This is particularly true with big heavy boats and long steep shingle banks along the high water line. One other quick point involves jockey wheels. Great on concrete as a third wheel with steering, but a liability when you bog down in soft sand on the beach. Because of the immense pressure on trailer wheels and hubs, it makes very good sense always to have spurs with you ready for a quick roadside swap. But why carry them inside the boat or the car? Why not put them to good practical use? This chap has his spurs set up as a third wheel for use on the beach, but because the sand is hard, he's still using his trailer's jockey wheel to get his outfit into the water. Back on the concrete with the jockey wheel dropped down or the trailer hitched to the car, the spur wheel carrier should well clear the ground. <laughs> 